Let's go. Are we live? Are we rolling? It's Lush, Ibi, and you. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we got one. We got a fresh one today, ladies and gentlemen. We got it nice. It's oh. baked. It's hot, warm, and ready. Under my umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, eh. <laughs> Riri is in the news. Rihanna, if you may or may not have heard, she had a lingerie show. She has a brand. Um, she has like a cosmetic slash uh, clothing brands. Uh, by the way, Z Zihu Collective coming soon. And she unfortunately made a mistake, or at least the person who created a song for the show made a mistake. Somewhere, somehow, there was a mix up in communication, I think. Apparently, yeah. Or it was done on purpose, deliberately, well aware of what was going on. What is it that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Well, there is something called in Islam hadith. Now, quick disclaimer, we are not a religious channel. We're a cultural channel, but there seems to have been some appropriation here, mm -hmm. regional appropriation. And that's when your boys, Lush and Ibi, come in. We're going to try to write this wrong and explain what happened exactly. Hadith. What is a hadith, Ibi? Well, hadith is basically a, it's more of a description of certain words that were said in the Quran mm -hmm. that provide more information of what is being said in the Quran. Mm -hmm. I think it's specifically by Muhammad Rasulullah, mm -hmm. who wrote these. Um, it was, no, it was um, witnesses. Witnesses, sorry. Uh, and My uh, apologies. So, so you have their, their narrations, mm -hmm. their traditions. When you say, uh, I follow the Quran and the traditions of the Prophet, that's what it means. So if the Quran was the what, the hadith are the how. Okay. Hadith are incredibly important. They come second to the Quran. And you don't have to be a, a, a Muslim to understand the validity or the importance of these scriptures, of this text. Let's play the song. There's a song that used hadith in particular, and the song is called Doom, and they use the hadith that apparently talks about the Day of Judgment. Oh my God. We're gonna get back to that. We're gonna get back to that in a minute. Let, let's go ahead and, and, and play this song real quick. I mean, look what she's hitting. That is disturbing. Okay, I don't care who created it. I don't care who the producer is. I don't care about any of those details. What I care about is listening to the words from a, from a scripture that is uh, second only to the Quran, okay? And being used in a way that you could not have picked a worse way to use it. Um, there is no worse way to have used it. That was just disturbing, oh my god. Because the thing is, look, dancing is haram. Music is haram. And then you decide to go grab a hadith, put it into a song with half-naked women dancing around. Great job, man. Freaking kudos to you, pal. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I get the frustration. I understand the frustration. Dancing, I'm not against. Uh, showing skin. You do you, mama, okay? But you need to know your jurisdiction. You need to know your boundaries. What is it that we're doing here, right? You chose something. Now, a little bit of context. Rihanna just finished doing another show where apparently this whole thing was to celebrate inclusion and to celebrate culture and to celebrate diversity. That backfired. Big time, that backfired. right? Talk about not knowing your audience or your product prior to and really taking advantage of these cultural elements, religious elements actually, not even cultural, these are religious elements. And I, you don't have to be religious to call it out um, or even a part of that religion to call it out. Had they used, you know, um, which has been done before, Jesus on a cross, Madonna's Oscar shows have been known to be super gory and super uh, symbolic of a lot of heretic, a lot of demon-like uh, statues. Riri, shortly after signing to Rockefeller, suddenly started to implement more 
uh, demonic or Illuminati type references in her music videos, whether it's showing the one eye, the, um, the black and white checkered floor, the pyramid with the eye at the top, all of these things, the, um, what's it called? Like Lucifer and the goat, the goat head. The, you, just look it up, you can find it. So Riri is no stranger to these, to these things. Okay? This is why I'm not that surprised, honestly, that this happened. And the thing is, what makes it even funnier, actually, the show before that, apparently she had a woman or there as well who's wearing a hijab. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have somebody that is wearing a religious symbol on their head, wouldn't you go out of your way to at least research? Try to get to know the religion a little bit better, because now they're, they're basically the face of your whatever you were doing there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, at least understand what you're doing. Let's not be fooled here, right guys? Like this, let's, let's not kid ourselves. She's selling a product, okay? She doesn't, this wasn't a voluntary, this wasn't some sort of charity event. Uh, this wasn't for a good cause. Like she has stuff to sell. She needs you to buy things from her. All right. So she's going to do and, and say whatever she has to, to try to include as many people as possible. This was a measured risk. Do I think that she didn't know? I don't, I think that she knew the impact it would have. I just didn't think she knew how severe it would be. And even still, I wouldn't put it past her. It's good marketing. We're sitting here talking about it. She has the exposure that she needs. And even though she apologized for it, it can't be undone. That's it. You yeah. can't unhear or unsee things, right? So she got the benefit of doing the wrong. And now she's basking in the, in the, in the, in the benefits of apologizing and everybody saying, Oh, boo boo, don't you worry. It's okay. It's fine. You know, you took, um, really sacred scriptures that, uh, religious people depend on for their daily lives and you perverted it and you molested it in a way where naked women were, were rubbing their breasts and their, and their, and their behinds all to sell lingerie while talking about, uh, doomsday judgment day. And the hadith also happened to talk about doomsday and judgment day. I mean, what kind of coincidence is that? I mean, you clearly didn't mean it, right? Donkey. What does the hadith say? Narrated by Abu uh, Huraira. The Prophet ﷺ said, The hour, the last day, will not be established until religious knowledge will be taken away by the death of religious learned men. Earthquakes will be very frequent. Time will pass quickly. Afflictions will appear. Murders will increase and money will overflow amongst you. Okay. So this is the, these are the words that you had singing over a song called doom. And while women were, were dancing and, and, and doing everything ironically that this narration predicted. Isn't it crazy? It is crazy. It is crazy. How ironic. Yeah, and so and so, don't sit there and tell me that you didn't know. Even though Rihanna apologized, and I have the apology here. Thank you for reaching out. It's been brought to our attention, and we're talking it out. I don't know what, what there is to talk it, talk uh, talk out. I obviously had no clue. Sad tear emoji. Interesting. Uh, I just hope people don't think I did this on purpose or to be offensive or anything like that. Because you know I would never. Hmm. I don't know about that. So I'm editing it out, but of course you can't take it back, you know? But of course you can't take it back. She doesn't, I think partly she doesn't want it to be taken back. She knows back. she can't take it back. Yeah, and it's serving her best interests. I mean, you've angered uh, some people that are probably still gonna buy your stuff. You know, I mean, let's be honest no, here. I wouldn't be surprised. And then, and then you've actually encouraged people that are Islamophobic and that actually hate the, the culture and the religion. Mm -hmm. And so there's upside, right? You may have a few people that might boycott you, but I think that the risk was, was worth it for her. Worth it. Yeah. And to those people who think that, oh, I don't understand why it's a big deal. Well, just because you don't understand something doesn't mean it's not wrong. Like there's still a certain level of responsibility that you need to own up to. And it seems like she's kind of doing it. I just feel bad that I hurt people, even though that was never my intention. The Muslim community is hurt by me right now. So that's the sad part. She, Rihanna is a public figure. She consumes public information. She has seen the reaction of the Muslim community to similar events. And I just don't know what her intention was by literally using 
um, a scripture, a tradition. I mean, thank God it wasn't uh, actual verses Verse, yeah. from the Quran. Hey man, I think it's just as bad to be honest. Yeah? You know what I mean? Like here, let me ask you a question. This question goes up to you guys as well. If you hear a song and then you hear this sound in the background and you know it's not an instrument, like you know for a fact it's not an instrument, wouldn't you actually try to listen to see, okay, what is that sound? Oh, yeah. And what are they saying? For sure. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. How she didn't go through with that doesn't make sense to me. Especially, especially if you make songs for a living. From, a, from, a, from an objective, non-biased perspective, did it sound good? I mean, of, recitation, the call for prayer, the, it, it, it puts people in a trance if you hear it live. Forget the audio, forget YouTube. If you hear the Adan going off, you're, you, be, you, you become, you, you, you transcend into the, into the heavens, then you come back down. I've seen it, I've, I've witnessed it, okay? Do, do you wanna take a, a piece of that, that magic, that vocal, that phonetic beauty that, that, that comes out of a human being that we're able to do in order to call for prayer so that people can, can, can speak to God? You wanna take that and just put it in a track for your lingerie show? You want to take that magic, you want to ball it, bottle it up and just use it so that you can sell a little bit of lipstick and bras, right? That's where I'm coming from. It sounds great. Don't get me wrong. Like objectively, it sounded, I, I liked it because it's familiar. Like I know what recitation sounds like, but then you got the aggressive drums and you got the women and you have all the elements that are just corrupting it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And even when you look at her apology in her Instagram story, she starts off not by apologizing, but by thanking. <laughs> right? I just realized that, yeah. What are we doing here? You're not, I mean, you're not fooling oh me. My God. I'd like to thank the Muslim community for pointing out a huge oversight that was unintentionally off offensive in our show. Bro, like how many layers, like all you had to do was, was apologize for what happened and, and move on. That's it. But look how, look how passive aggressive this is, at least to me. She's showing an alliance with the Muslim community by thanking them. So she's not showing that there's any issue whatsoever. She's not a, like, you and, mean... and then she says the word oversight as in it's like, oopsie, you know, and then it was unintentionally offensive at that show. So she's isolating the incident to this, that show. Not like the track is wildly available, widely available. It's available for download, for purchase. It's all over the place. It just happened at the show. And then she says, I would like to more importantly apologize, which is okay. I, I get that. She's putting more emphasis on it um, to you for this honest yet careless mistake. We understand that we have hurt many of our Muslim brothers and sisters, and I'm incredibly disheartened by this. For me, I always like to flip it. I always like to twist it and turn it and take the argument and put it into different, different lights. What if these were Bible verses? Oh my God. Okay. Mixed, mastered, beautifully engineered, in the booth, producers, blah, blah, blah. And these are, and, and it was Jesus's words that were being remixed with a woman rubbing her breasts and, and, and grabbing her crotch and, and doing all of these gymnastics on a platform wearing lingerie. Half naked. Half naked. Oh, Jesus, guys, Jesus, he's, he's, he's the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. So I'm not going to sit here and make a difference between the prophet and, and, and the Christian uh, version. He's just as important. And so imagine that, Yeah, you know? I know exactly what you're saying. And it's, it's just sad that we have to get to that point to make people understand what we're trying to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. And back to this, it's like she's acknowledging it, but at the same time, she's not acknowledging it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like she'll type up certain words to make it feel like, oh, okay. When you really like, oh, okay, now I see what you're saying. I, I feel for her. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, nah, I don't really yeah. care for what happened. I'm no. just saying this to get, to get my head out of the water. Right, and, yeah, and she has a PR team. And I mean, listen, at the, at the same time, you and I were talking about this actually just right before we started filming. I'm an actual like social libertarian, mm. right? Like I believe in the freedom of choice. I think everybody's allowed to do what they want so long as they are fully aware of the impact and the consequences of their actions. I really, really, truly believe in that. The conversation now becomes liberty versus authority. The religious authority seems to have some friction with the, liber the use of liberty in the Western world. And I think this is the, the constant clashing that we yep. see all the time. All the time, all the time. For me personally, you do you, okay? 
I'm not insecure enough to light fires and to riot and to run in and, and, start, and start doing all that stuff. We're not all going to, to heaven or hell or the afterlife together. Everybody's going on their own, if that's what you believe in. She's going to have to answer to that. But for me, is there a social responsibility to right this wrong? Yes, I think that's why we're making this video and that's why we're talking about it. And you use your platform, you use your voice. But then on the flip side, like you, we, can't, we can't intimidate also people from not being, hey, listen, if you, if, if you don't want ever, this would never happen in an Islamic Republic. Oh, never, ever. Okay? Oh my God. You go to Saudi Arabia, you go to the Emirates, you go to Iran, uh, it won't happen. Never. The show wouldn't happen. These, the, the, the song would have been reviewed beforehand. They would have, there's a, a ministry of, uh, of, um, of Islamic relations. There's a, there's a whole committee. There's a one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. But it didn't happen there. And that's the argument. That is the argument. And the thing is, look, the main reason also why we're here talking about this is because a lot of people don't understand what is wrong with what happened in that video. Right. To them, it's normal. Right. Like, I saw a couple of comments. It's like, why is everybody overreacting? I don't understand. Well, just because you don't understand something, once again, does not mean it's not wrong. Right. And, and that's a big, big, big issue. Yes. And I think uh, the normalization of Islamophobia, of uh, Arab phobia, of discrimination and hate is very, very incremental. All right. It doesn't happen overnight. And so as we start to accept certain things slowly, right? Like the, like the frog in the, in, the, in the water, you have to heat it up slowly in order to kill him. Otherwise, he's just going to jump out. And so this is what I'm afraid of, is that the culture and the religion is slowly being uh, perverted in a way. And by the way, guys, I'm sorry. I know I need to have to do this disclaimer. I don't represent it, okay? Th these are my thoughts. These are my opinions. But I do understand it. Okay, it's an individual journey that we go on. But there's this community, um, I guess, responsibility, if you will, for people to come together to right a wrong whenever, whenever we see it. And this is definitely a wrong that needs to yes, be sir. corrected. The next layer that I talk about is context, right? It's all within it. Like I said, if it happened in an, in an Islamic country, uh, then we would have, oh my God, like a hundred episodes to film to, to pick this thing apart as to how it happened. Man, but that'll be a mess. Right. And everything's relative. Everything is relative. When someone's calling me out for speaking Arabic uh, in public and, and his jeans are ripped and, he, and his toes are coming out of his shoes and he's holding a cup shaking full of change, everything's in context. Who, who am I to go ahead and, 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 and bury him for that, for, uh, some sort of moral or principle stance? There's a teachable moment there. Right? Not a punishable one, as though he knew better. So the question now is, did they know better? Our level of outrage should match their le what we expected from them. And what I expected from her was zero. Nothing. She doesn't speak for, for the Muslim community, for the Arab community. Even if she did know what she was putting in her music, on that lingerie show, all that stuff, she still would have been through with it. Yeah. Even though she knows that the backlash she's going to get from it, yeah. the outcome, everything, she would have still went through with it. Yeah. And, and for me, it's, it's, I don't mind the celebration of the religion. I don't mind the celebration of the culture. But all right? the right way. But if you're going to appropriate it, yeah. If you're going to appropriate it, you, got, you, need to, you need to tread very, very carefully and understand what, what, what you're doing and what the impact is going to be, the religious or cultural impact. Now, the, the Islam teaches forgiveness, it teaches compassion. This is what I think should be shown towards her, right? But not without saying what it is that needs to be said. Yep. I think her brand is, is geared towards women. And there's so many women, whether they're hijabi or not, that are going to keep buying her stuff. 100%. And they keep, you know, 100%. The, 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 the conversation now turns into these brands don't actually give a shit. They, they don't. Like, give it a week. You'll, you'll forget this even happened. Yeah. As soon as the cafe, guys, this right here, as soon as the cafe in the early 2000s became popular because of all the destruction that was happening there, this suddenly became a fashion statement. Yep. I saw it on campus everywhere and it drove me crazy up the wall. 
you know, these, these, these girls holding their Starbucks, wearing a kafiyi, and I would ask them about it and whatnot, and they had no clue. One girl once said, oh, I think it's from Portugal. Meanwhile, brothers and sisters are dying with it on their, around their neck with, with, the blood, with the blood soaking through it. So to me, you know, as long as it can sell and the capitalist machine moves forward, this is what's gonna happen, basically. Let us know what you think, please. I wanna hear from you about this situation, whether you're part of the religion or you're not, whether you're part of the culture or you're not, you're still a part of the family, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. It is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is, but no matter what, it's always... <clears throat> Zero.